good morning good afternoon good evening whatever time it is at your at your side when you are watching this video uh, so in today's video we are going to talk about some foundational concepts which are often used in qualitative research another reason why i wanted to talk about these concept is oftentimes i've seen students uh, use this concept interchangeably or kind of confused about what is exactly it means. So I thought about creating a video on talking about these concepts and give you more clarity around those. So today we will be talking about some four, um, four concepts which are often used in qualitative research. Number one is research paradigm. or philosophy. We will also talk about another concept which is interpretive framework then we will move to theoretical framework And finally, we will talk about conceptual framework. So these four concepts are in a way foundation to understanding qualitative research and also planning and designing qualitative research. So let's start with research paradigm or research philosophy. Research paradigm or philosophy is the foundational belief or assumption behind uh, qualitative research or any research that we do. What are some fundamental beliefs or assumptions that a researcher hold? Interpretive framework is more focused on the phenomenology, uh, sorry, the methodology that, that a researcher use uh, when they are conducting their study. And theoretical framework is basically using a theory to inform your research. Similarly, conceptual framework is a concept that a researcher or a scholar develops to inform their study. So that's briefly about these four things. So let's talk more in detail, starting with research paradigm, interpretive framework, theoretical framework, conceptual framework, and how they are related to each other. So let's start with how they are sort of related or they inform each other. Uh, as I said that uh, A research paradigm is a set of beliefs that researcher holds. And when I say beliefs or assumptions, what I mean to say here, he main things. What is reality? or in the nomenclature of research philosophy, we call it ontology. What is reality? When I say this is real, or this is not real, or I could say this is truth, or this is not the truth. So that is what we mean to say uh, when I say set of beliefs. What is reality? What is nature of reality? How we define reality? Another thing is about how do we know reality? So if I want to understand something, first question is what is, is it real? How do I define reality? And second is 
If it is real, then how do I know? How do I understand? How do I examine this thing, a phenomenon or an object? And finally, the values. As a researcher, when I'm trying to understand a reality, what values I should hold that helps me in that process of understanding reality? And this is in, in philosophy, we call it uh, axiology. For how do we know reality? We call it epistemology. You may have often heard these words ontology, epistemology, axiology, uh, and this is what it means. Ontology, what is reality? Uh, what is the meaning of reality? How, what we call as real? Epistemology is about how, we do, how, how do we know reality? What is the nature of knowledge? How we understand knowledge? And values in the process of understanding, examining the knowledge or, or reality, what are the values which are going to help us in that process? So this is about what a research paradigm is about. A research paradigm is a foundational set of beliefs that a researcher hold when they are uh, conducting a study. So if I could just draw something that might help you in that process is for a researcher, uh, a research paradigm is like a big ball. And there are many types of research uh, paradigms. We will understand those more uh, in, in, in our later videos. So let's say one uh, research paradigm is positivism. Another research paradigm is post-positivism. Another one is constructivism. And the one is pragmatism. There are some more feminism and critical theory. So these these are some uh, very important research paradigms uh, which are used in, in research. And we will go through each one of them more detail later. But right now let's understand that how this concept or research paradigm holds the other concept that we, uh, that we need to know and we will cover today. So a research uh, paradigm or philosophy is your foundation. So that's the foundational belief system that a researcher hold. And within that research paradigm, there is, you could say, another small ball, which is interpretive framework. So what is, what, what is interpretive framework? An interpretive framework provides guidelines about how to conduct a research. It has certain methodologies that researchers use to execute the research, to analyze the research, and disseminate the research. So positive, so when you think about research paradigm, these are set of beliefs, set of ideas, set of assumptions. But when you think about interpretive framework, it is the concretization of the research paradigm. Means what steps sh uh, should a researcher take? How a data collection should be done? 
how what are the, what process a, re a researcher should follow when it comes to data analysis so sort of concrete steps of conducting a research from research conceptualization to data collection data analysis and um, dissemination of the research findings so entire research process the the interpretive frameworks governs that so your research paradigm is the bigger ball that holds your interpretive framework and there are many interpretive frameworks in other words you could also call frameworks as research design so when you think about qualitative research there are many research frameworks but the most common are five so they are phenomenology grounded theory the third one is case study fourth one is ethnography phenomenology grounded theory case study ethnography and there is another one i am forgetting the name phenomenology oh narrative inquiry so these are the five uh, very popular research designs used in qualitative research and we use the word interpretive fr framework also to denote these various approaches to conduct research so now you get the point your research paradigm is the bigger assumptions uh, beliefs that as a researcher you hold and then within that bigger ball these five uh, main approaches of conducting research which gives you more concrete steps of uh, stepwise steps of conducting research and they are called interpretive frameworks or research design now so these are the two main concept now let's talk about the third concept which i shared in the beginning is theory, uh, theoretical framework what is a theoretical framework within this interpretive framework you can have another small goal here and you can call it as i said theoretical framework and another is conceptual framework so what is a theoretical framework let's say i choose i hold constructivism as my research paradigm and within that research paradigm i choose phenomenology as my research design when i'm conducting my research obviously i'm following the steps which are defined in interpretive framework of uh, phenomenology however to inform my research even more i can use a established theory and that theory can inform in my data collection process uh, in data interpretation process and that theory we call it as a theoretical framework when you think about a conceptual framework as i said theoretical framework is already an established theory in the field that you borrow to inform your study you use to inform your study a conceptual framework is not an established theory this is developed by the scholar by the researcher himself herself to inform their study but it doesn't mean that you just think about any anything and you can use it as your conceptual framework a conceptual framework is always grounded in the literature existing literature so as a researcher i can go into the literature and see what are 
some variables which I think might inform my study. And I can use those variables uh, as a conceptual framework to inform my study. We will discuss these things in more detail uh, in later videos. But right now, what I want you to understand how these concepts are related, uh, related and how they are placed within the frame of whole qualitative research. So you see, let's summarize it. So the bigger ball, metaphorically speaking, is your research paradigm. So every researcher who is doing a qualitative research, they have a research paradigm, which means they carry certain assumptions, certain beliefs that they use while conducting the study. Now, within that research paradigm, they use a research, uh, sorry, interpretive framework or a research design. It could be a grounded theory, ethnography, narrative inquiry, case study, phenomenology. And within that interpretive framework, they may use a extra layer of analytic tool, which might be a theoretical framework or a conceptual framework. In our uh, later sections, we will discuss more in detail about uh, research paradigms, various research paradigms, as you could see here, positivism, what is positivism, uh, post-positivism, uh, what are certain, what are those beliefs and assumptions under each of these research paradigms. And then we will cover the five main tradition of conducting qualitative research or interpretive framework or research design, whatever terminology you may, you may want to use. And then finally, we discuss theoretical frameworks. What might be some possible theoretical framework? What are the uh, parameters that a researcher should use when they choose to include a theoretical framework or a conceptual framework? So that's it for today. Uh, thanks for, for being here. Thank you very much. Have a good rest of the day, and I'll see you soon. Bye.